Chapter 3, Room for Just One, But Two in a Cell. To say that there wasn't a lot of room in their hiding place was an understatement. Six and Mono were lucky that they were small enough to fit, even if just barely. The two were pressed against each other and the walls of the space. They had hidden in small places before, but never have they been required to get as close to each other as they were now. It was uncomfortable, to say the least. They felt the elevator stop, and heard voices from outside. What happened to Freddy? I don't know. He was working just fine a minute ago. Here, let's restart his system. Maybe that'll fix him. Suddenly the thing they were hiding in was lifted up, pushed onto something, then tilted back as they started rolling it somewhere. Meanwhile, Mono and Six kept as quiet as they could during the whole ordeal. It wasn't too hard, considering they were used to keeping silent, but with them being able to hear each other's shallow breaths and quick heartbeats, it was stressing them out. The thing was laid down again for a while, the people outside walking around and talking to one another, all the while clicking and clacking could be heard from nearby. It felt like forever before they were stood back up again, leaned back and wheeled somewhere else. Finally, the people moving them stopped, left them standing up, and left. Mono and Six waited a few minutes, just to be sure they were in the clear. Once they were sure they were alone, Mono shifted slightly with a soft grunt and tried to open the hatch to the thing they were in. Unfortunately it didn't budge. Oh no. Six, help me push. Six nodded and tried to push against it as well, but to no avail. They were trapped. If Mono had been the one to suggest hiding here, Six would have berated him endlessly for getting them into this mess. However, this idea was Six's, meaning that this was her fault. Not that Mono was going to say it. He was too nice for that. Too nice for her. Now what do we do? Six sighed. I don't know. Just wait I guess. Not much else we can do. Well, that turned out worse than expected. But at least they weren't caught by any mean adults yet. That was the best they could say for this situation. The two were stuck in there for so long, they were starting to fall asleep. Sure it was cramped and uncomfortable, but it was warm. The two were starting to nod off when the thing they were in finally started moving. It wasn't much, it was just a shift, and a soft whirring sound, but it was definitely enough to jostle the two kids awake. They were alert in an instant. Showtime already? I am experiencing a malfunction. The recharge cycle is not complete. Mono and Six tried to exchange glances with one another, though it was proving difficult with the lack of space for movement. The thing took a step back, then stumbled a bit, and the two inside inhaled sharply, fearing that it would fall. Ha! Huh. My balance seems to be off as well. My weight has shifted. It moved again, probably taking another shaky step, and the kids tried to hold in gasps as it wobbled, they did not want the thing to fall while they were trapped inside of it. But apparently they weren't quiet enough, since the thing stopped once they gasped. Is someone there? I heard a noise. Mono and Six were panicking. What were they supposed to do? Keep silent and stay hidden? That was always the best option for them, but then how else were they going to get out of this thing? Mono made his decision. Six wouldn't like it, but it was what he believed would be the best. Still, he was anxious. He opened his mouth, but struggled to speak. Ah. Uh. As soon as he spoke, Six did her best to elbow him and get him to shut up. Who said that? Six tried to shift to face him with a glare, which only ended up making the thing stumble again. The kid stiffened again as it did. Mono bit his lip and closed his eyes. He needed to speak to this thing to get them out. He had to. So, reluctantly, he spoke again. I did. Down here. The thing leaned forward, and the kids did their best to keep themselves up, even if it was just to tense again. Down where? I still do not see you. Six was fuming, doing her best to glare at Mono. The boy sighed. Okay, listen. You were sleeping, and we needed a place to hide. So when we saw your stomach open, we climbed inside. We? My stomach? You mean my chest cavity? That place is reserved for oversized birthday cakes and piñatas. It is not a safe play area. Birthday cakes? Piñatas? What were those? Six's cheeks puffed angrily. We're not playing! After a moment, the door suddenly opened, and the two tumbled out and onto the floor, Six landing on top of Mono. The two groaned with pain, but could barely even breathe before a large hand was placed on either one of their shoulders and turned them around. There, only inches away, was the bare thing. Now that they had good lighting, they could see its face in clearer detail. 
It clearly wasn't an organic being, definitely being made out of something hard like plastic or metal. Its face had red and blue markings on it, and its eyes were a cool shade of blue, glowing a bit with some kind of light. There you are. There are two of you. Suddenly a brighter light shone from its eyes, starting from their feet and ending at their heads. Mono and Six winced and shielded away when the blue light hit their eyes. Scanning complete. It said, finally moving away from them to stand properly, geez it was tall. How odd. Your guest profiles are unknown to me. Who are you? Freddy was, stumped at the situation he found himself in. Somehow two children managed to cram themselves into his chest cavity. Two children who were not in the guest profiles. Two children who... He didn't even know where to begin. He had been programmed to look out for specific signs of possible abuse in children, and these two, who he had only seen for a few seconds, were already setting off so many red flags. For one, their clothes were filthy, covered in dirt and grime. The boy wore a brown trench coat with matching ruffled pants and a shirt underneath, and the girl wore only a simple yellow raincoat from what he could tell. Neither of them had shoes or socks, and their bare feet were filthy. Then there were their frames. His statistics showed him that they looked to be between the ages of 5 to 7, but they were so thin and pale, their skin doing little to hide their bones. His scan found several smaller wounds on them, from scrapes and bruises, as well as scarring that he did not like to see. They gave him no answer when he asked them who they were. The boy and the girl backed away from him cautiously, taking each other's hand as they quietly glanced around Freddy's room, filled with merchandise of himself. Children, are you alright? Their eyes flickered to the door, and then they bolted for it. Freddy grimaced slightly as they attempted to open the sliding door, only for it to not budge. Once they figured that out, then they noted the door to the back room, and made a beeline for that as well. Children, please. He begged, hands raised in concern. The girl was slamming her fist on the button to open the door, but Freddy knew that it was locked. Eventually the two gave up and turned back towards him, backs against the wall and looking ready to run or fight. Freddy had to be careful about this. He slowly knelt down so that he wasn't towering over them as much. Children, I mean you no harm. I am simply confused and concerned over why you were hidden in my chest cavity. It must have been uncomfortable in there. Can you tell me your names? The kids exchanged wary glances, then looked back at him again. You first. That came as a surprise to Freddy. Everyone knew his name. The pizza plex was named after him, and he was the leader of the band. What kid who came in here didn't know who he was? I am Freddy Fazbear. I am the mascot of Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex, and you two are. The boy glanced at the girl, then relaxed his stance. I. I'm Mono. He nudged his friend. She huffed and rolled her eyes, crossing her arms over her chest. Six. Wait, what? Ah, perhaps you misheard me. I asked for your name, not your age. My name is Six, she declared, stomping her foot on the ground. That was, her name? Her name was a number. Odd. And he hadn't ever heard of someone being named Mono either. Oh, my apologies. It appears that I am the one who misunderstood. Well, Mono, and Six, I will notify the main office. Or at least, he tried to. Ha, connection error. I cannot connect to the main network. The kids exchanged confused looks with each other. What does that mean? The boy, Mono, asked. Right. The two were fairly young. He doubted they would understand most of the dialect he used. I am trying to call someone in charge of the pizza plex, and tell them that you two are here with me. But they cannot hear me calling them, it seems. The kids still looked relatively confused, but also tense. Don't call for anyone. The girl, Six, hissed. You can't let anyone know we're here. Why not? Again, the two shared a glance. Freddy furrowed his brows in confusion. I sense that you two do not trust others very easily. I can assure you that our staff is quite nice and would only like to help you. Six shook her yellow hooded head. No way. I don't think she's going to stop until she finds us. Who? Who is looking for you? Your mother? Before the kids got the chance to look any more confused than they already were, they suddenly went stiff again as the sound of light footsteps appeared from the distance. Brown and green eyes darted around the room again, and the two quickly ran to the nearest hiding place. They crouched and hid behind the couch, making sure to keep out of sight of the window. Curious about what they were scared of, Freddy walked to the curtains over the window and peeked outside, only to see Officer Vanessa making her way down the road with a flashlight in hand. It is just the security guard, 
I am sure she can help you too. Shush. Mono and Six didn't come out of hiding. Freddy stared at their direction for a moment, unsure what to make of all of this. They didn't appear to be playing some kind of game. No, they were much too serious for that. Freddy turned back to look outside, and watched as Officer Vanessa continued down the row, passing his room without a second glance. Freddy closed the curtains again, then approached the children. She is gone now. You can come out. Mono was the first to relax, releasing a soft breath and moving to stand back up. Six followed soon after, if a bit more begrudgingly. Freddy knelt down to them again to talk to them. Mono, Six, why are you hiding from the security guard? Mono looked down, somewhat shamefully and kicked the air. We kinda, we we thought that the food was for everyone, and then... We don't know who she is, but she's trying to get us. Can you not talk so loudly when something walks by? Okay, clearly these children had trust issues. Mono seemed to be a bit more open to it however, especially compared to Six, who was entirely closed off. What had happened to them to make them this way? I apologize, but I tell you the truth when I say that you do not have to be scared of our security guard. She can help you find your parents, I am sure. Mono's brows furrowed. What's that? What is what? Parents. What's that? Something must have broken within Freddy's system, because he found that he could not comprehend what the question was, and why a child was asking such a question. Oh, well. Freddy stuttered to find his words. In his system, he looked up the dictionary definition in hopes that it would give the best and most clear answer. Unfortunately that seemed to prove futile when it simply said, Parent. None. A father or mother. He had to think outside the box for this one. A parent is an adult, most of the time two adults, who care for an infant or a child. They nurture them and look out for them and raise them. Mono tilted his head in confusion, while Six grimaced in disgust at the idea. Freddy was getting more concerned by the minute. Do you, not have parents? They shook their heads. Adults are dangerous. They want to catch you, and kill you or use you. The robot went silent after that. He, couldn't say that they were entirely wrong. He was programmed to protect children from violent and dangerous adults after all. However, claiming that all adults wanted to harm children. That is not entirely true. He tried to argue gently. There are many children who live with loving parents and have good homes. How many adults have been violent towards you in your lives? A lot. A whole lot. Too many to count. Every single one who saw us. Oh. Oh dear. But, that couldn't be true. Statistically they must have seen someone who was genuinely willing to help them. Perhaps they were just scared and only perceived them as a threat. Suddenly, Six pointed at him. Are you an adult too? Well, not in the traditional sense. I am not human, but I have a similar mental capacity as a human adult, though, I am not capable of being violent towards a child. The kids exchanged glances again. What, are you exactly? I am an animatronic, a robot, if you will. Though I am made to resemble that of a bear. What's Tsunami? Anima. A robot? Have you not heard of this before either? They shook their heads. Oh geez, how to explain what a robot is? I am, similar to that of a large doll, I suppose. Though I can move and speak and think on my own. I do not breathe or have blood, or anything that real people have. Their eyes went wide, though he was unsure if it was from awe and wonder, or from fear. A living doll. Oh, Mono. We've seen those before. Remember the students from the school? They were living dolls too. Yeah. Mono's suddenly grew more guarded. He stared up at Freddy cautiously, and without looking away, he took Six's hand and took a slow step back. Six seemed to realize what he was thinking, and took a step back as well, her guard now completely up again. Freddy needed to salvage this. Children. I do not know what you have seen or what has happened to you, but I can assure you that I will not harm you. I cannot harm you, even if I wanted to. I was built to care for and protect children. Again, looked at each other. How do we know that? I suppose the only way to prove that is to stay with me and see that through my actions. However, I can tell that you two do not wish to stay here. Six shook her head. We need to leave. That woman's going to get us if we stay here for too long. Freddy checked his internal clock. Oh. It was approaching closing time. Well, I can escort you out of the building then. We close in about half an hour. If you get out before then, Officer Vanessa will not follow you, since she is required to stay here until morning. 
Though, I am still unsure as to why you perceive her as a threat. She wants to get us. How do we know that you're not just going to bring us to her? I will not. I may be confused on your way of thinking, but I will respect your wishes and simply help you to leave instead. I will even help you avoid her if at all possible. One last time, the two exchanged glances, then glanced back at him. Mono raised a finger. Give us a minute to talk. Yes, of course. Mono and Six then stepped into the furthest corner of the room, turning their backs to him, and started whispering to each other. Of course, Freddy was an animatronic and could hear things much easier than humans could, meaning that he could hear what they were discussing. We can't trust him. I say we ditch him. Well? Mono hesitated. I don't know. Don't you think that if he wanted to hurt us, he would have by now? That's always how adults work. He could backstab us. I just... Six trailed off when she remembered back to the tower. As the walls caved around them, as she held Mono in her hand. She remembered the hate and spite that she felt towards him in that moment for his betrayal. He had gotten her kidnapped, gotten her turned into a monster, had destroyed the only thing in life that brought her joy. She wanted to drop him into the endless abyss below. That is. Until she remembered that he had come back for her, to save her. Only then had she pulled him up. Six turned her gaze to the floor shamefully. I just don't want you to get hurt. And that was the truth. She realized just how much that Mono meant to her. He was her one and only friend. She didn't want to lose him. Six gasped softly when she felt Mono take her hand. She gazed back up at him to see him smiling down at her reassuringly. I won't get hurt. We've been through way worse. But I, I still think we have to trust him, just this once. And suddenly Six bristled again. But why? We don't know this place. We don't know which way is out. We could be walking around for hours, and then she could find us. If he shows us the way out, then we could get out of here that much quicker. Six pouted and puffed her cheeks, then looked away in defeat. Okay, that's a good point. I still don't like it though. I know, but right now we don't really have much of a choice. We're going to be stuck in this room anyway if he doesn't open the doors for us. Another good point. Fine. Let's do this. Mono nodded. The two turned back towards the, what was it called again? Robot, to see him standing across the room, waiting for their response. Six took Mono's hand in hers, and he gave her a gentle squeeze back. We have decided to let you help us, Mono said, trying to sound brave, but his voice wavering. Very well. I thank you for putting your trust in me. Six rolled her eyes. Yeah. Don't make us regret it. 